Well, Photoshop for free, well, not really. But what I have recently found is a version of Photoshop, which is free to use, um, called Photoshop Express. And that's what I thought I'd demo here in this video, as many of you might find this very useful if you wish to make basic edits to a photo, such as cropping the image down to this um, shape or size you want, and then actually resizing the image to a more usable size, maybe for adding to your blog or online shop, um, or even your Facebook profile. So let me um, demonstrate this just now. So um, let's have a quick search in Google for Photoshop Express Online. Let's spell online and let's see what we can find. The top one here, which brings us into their website here. We're going to enable all for um, that. And then we're looking for this photo button here of um, edit photo now. So let's click on that, which opens up their web app. Now, there is the option to sign in here and creating an account for this is free. Um, the basic functionality will probably work nicely without creating an account, but some of the features will be required to have an account. So I generally recommend you create an account. Um, now, before actually adding our image here, we're going to go and look at a photo I've prepared. This image here is straight out the camera. Um, and if we have a look at the details of the image, we can see first of its name is basic numbers. Um, its size on disk is rather large at um, 5,900 kilobytes. And its dimensions in pixels is again rather large of just over 5,000 by 3,500 pixels in height, which is rather large. And this would be generally far too big to use if you were planning to upload to a website. So we want to take this image and we want to make some edits to it. We're going to drag it back to the browser and drop it in here where it quickly and becomes active in the window here. And this is one of the real things I like about this um, Photoshop Express browser app is it's not uploading the image to the Adobe server or anything like that. It's actually working here right in your browser on your own computer. So it's a lot quicker to use, which is really great. So um, on the left hand side here, we'll go to our main menu. Um, and one of the first things we want to do is we want to crop this image. Cropping it is using part of the image um, rather than the whole piece. So I'm going to go to crop and straighten. Um, on the right hand side here, we've got some various preset ratios um, for the photos. And down here, we've also got some preset sizes for particular things um, online. Maybe in Facebook, you want a new profile um, image or a background cover. Or maybe in YouTube, you want to have a new video thumbnail. These are all preset sizes this has got built in, which I think is really useful. In photos though, I'm going to um, hit a ratio of, um, I think, three by two. Um, and that will constrain this option when I'm dragging into the size I actually want. Also notice there's these little dotted lines across my crop option here, which helps me to line up whatever I want within the image, um, which is our rule of fur. It's a little photography tip there. Um, so let's just drag that into maybe about there. So now we can click crop image. It takes a little moment while your browser does all the thinking. And now we have the image here um, to the shape we want it to be. Now to actually take this from our browser and get it onto our computer, we need to save it. Prior to that though, it is worth considering what size we want it to be on disk. Um, so let's say if you're planning to use it on your website, you might want it to get it relatively small. So I'm going to go to resize image. And again, there's loads of different presets here that we can choose to use, or you can override with your own settings. I know the size I want this image to be. I want it to be 600 pixels wide. So I'm going to write over that, type in here and click that, which should update, which looks a bit small on screen here, but we can make that a bit bigger just so we can see it. Um, so that's the size I want to be in pixels, this outputted size. Um, so I can click resize image. 
and now we're ready to download so we're going to click download and now we've got the option of naming the file and setting the quality of the image that we want to download so i'm going to call it a simple thing maybe hills it's always worth naming an image something appropriate to what it's about um, i want it to be a jpeg um, and now we want to think about what size it should be in quality or on disk. You can see the outputted size currently says it's going to be 120 kilobit uh, bytes, which is okay. And we can choose to scroll down here. If I go to the extreme lowest, you can see the image completely falls apart. So it's finding a compromise between image quality and outputted size on disk. Um, we want to get it as small a file size as we can, but we still want the image to look quite nice. So we can see here the, the gradient of sort of, it starts green at this end and goes down to red where it gets a bit uncomfortable to look at. So we want to find a nice quality. I'm thinking maybe around about 80. Should we try 80? So there it's saying good image quality and you can see um, size on disk is going to be 53 kilobits. So now we're ready to click download. We'll click that now and we can choose to um, open it or save it in a particular location. So let's just open it. Um, and we're in Windows, so it pops open here. So now let's take this image that we've just created um, across to where we have the original image stored. And let's do a comparison. Pasting it in here, we can see its name has changed to Hills. Um, we can see its file type, we can see its size, it's been reduced down from um, almost 6,000 kilobytes to 52 kilobytes, far better. And we can see its dimensions, it's dropped down to um, over 5,000 wide, down to 600 wide, which is far more useful for website use. Okay, so hopefully um, you find this um, video helpful and gives you a quick insight to what um, Photoshop Express Online offers.